Good morning, everybody. It's Friday. Yay! Hey, Hector, how's it going? JW, Art, Chip, Joe, John, Admin, whoever Admin is. It's Friday. You guys ready for another uh, crazy, rocky ride today? Morning, Russell. That's what we may have here, just a, a rocky ride today. So uh, make that decision. Do you want to trade or not? Hey, Julie. Whipsaw, yeah, Hector, good, good, good uh, term for it. Whipsaw Friday, Freaky Friday, Freaky Friday. All right, so uh, you know, I get up in the morning, I turn my computer on, and oh snap, futures are down a little bit. You can see the market's down a little. Uh, we're down here. We're at at or near the 50 period moving average. Okay, you know, if we can survive above that 50 period moving average, that's fantastic. Um, the thing of it is, is we want to watch trends. I don't think any one of us are really in the business of guessing when a char star stock turns around. So as, um, as we've got this candle here, that would be a down candle. This is going to be a down candle because it's going to open up about right there. So what we've got now is a two bar trend to the downside. And I just don't believe that there's anybody here in the trading room that is putting all their marbles, oh, we're going to turn around and rally. I, I just don't think so. Uh, maybe there is, but don't think so. So what's going to happen is maybe this does, this stays nice and red today or black on my charts case. We come down again. Again, we can't guess. So we, we have to wait for that bullish candle if you're long. Now, if you're short, um, if you're, um, if you're short, you, you know, you short based on that trend and candles coming down. Uh Oh, you guys aren't seeing a screen. Hold on here. Hang on one sec. Okay. So, um, since we're not in the business of, of, um, picking bottoms and, you know, knowing when turns are going to be, then we we have to wait. You know, you can be short. Nothing wrong with shorting a trade like that. But then you stop shorting when you get reversal style candles, and then you turn into buying long. So shorting is perfect, and then you get in that long scenario. Uh, the thing about the long scenario is we have to wait. We just can't simply guess. So which means there there is a point where you you might be out uh, not trading so much or you might be out of pocket. You might be losing a little money somewhere in here. You know, if, if you're looking at it like, hey, look, I'm going to get short up here. Shoot, I missed all that money there. That's okay, all right? That, that's all right. Um, if there's any takeaway, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about it is you don't have to pick bottoms to make to make money in trading, so... We need the market to give us clues. We need to give, let it give us hints. And we do that through price action. We read the price action and that gives us the hints. Um, like this candle here, it's a dark cloud cover. You know, yesterday, um, I didn't see anybody going long. Why not? Because that's a dark cloud cover. Who's gonna go long on a dark cloud cover? No one is. So look what happened. The one you you know very smart traders, we've actually gapped down today just like a get dark cloud cover is supposed to do. Not necessarily gap, but push it down, make a lower low. Now we need to wait for those buyers. Being on and we're close enough to the 50 here. Being on the 50 period moving average is not a reason to go long. However, it can be a condition to go long. So what I mean by that is this could be an absolute condition. So we'll call it condition one. Um, let's draw a line from here to here. So you've got lows. And if, if it gets right there at that 50, it'll come down to that trend line. So this will be condition two right here. Um, condition three, somebody might look at this and say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, stretch just a little bit 
and draw a line here and go across and now that's an inverted hammer uh, we're going to stretch on that one a little bit um, and let's see that would be condition three whoops three condition three so it's when you get one two three four five conditions together then it becomes a trade but not until then no one condition should be used for the trade so oh hey we're down to 50 period moving average that lame ass quote buy the dip let's do it that is just so wrong every which way from sunday so uh be real careful today what is today four witches flying around quad witching this is going to be one batty day um how many people really want to get out there and be trading? So think about that. Okay, uh, let's come over here and look at some possible trades for the trade list. Now, keep in mind, please keep in mind, I'm putting trades on the trade list, not necessarily for the day. What I'm doing is I'm building a trade list up because that's actually what I like to trade from. Um, so let's, uh, let's do this. This is the list I typically trade from, all right? Um, above this here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more alert windows. To my left, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. I'm gonna be in trouble. I've got 29 windows. To my right, um, 29, 30, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 8, 3, 9, 40, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, upper screen, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Let's just call it an even 50. I've got 50 windows that feed this window. Um, you guys, you feed this window right here. It's the window I trade from. Okay. So... I'm putting stocks on my watch list to wait for them to come back. So this Abbott, I like Abbott. I really do. I like Abbott a lot. I mean, I think it's a, it's a, it's a really, really good trade. But I also think that it's Friday. I also think that it's quad dripping, triple Friday. I also think the spy looks like garbage. Um, I also think IWM looks like garbage. I also think transports look like garbage. You see where I'm going with this? I also think SMH looks like garbage. I think FNGU looks like garbage. So, man, I do like Abbott, but I don't think anything out there is out to help me. Right now, I think everything in the market is out to hurt me. So I do like Abbott. So I'm going to put that on my watch list and I'm going to wait for it. See, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that nothing, nothing says Abbott can't go up there. And there's no magic. I just, I just put that line up there. Heck, we could, we could make this a little smaller. There we go. Let's just go to an even 200. There you go. I'm a believer that Abbott can go there. So... I have tons of ground to trade in. I don't have to buy it here. And the market condition right now is telling me maybe, maybe not to. So I'm going to put this on my watch list for later in the game. However, some people might trade it. Um, any M, check any M out. Look at that. Crazy day yesterday. Absolutely crazy. Excuse me, man. That was getting dry. Beautiful candle yesterday. It looks like we're holding up here. This looks like a very, very nice chart. Uh, I will be very tempted to nibble on this today using about this 58.45, 58.25 as a stop area. Anything above that, I'm going to look as bullish. The 200 period moving average is sitting right there. Uh, we've got a few target points. We're just going to come over here to those highs, just like that. And we'll put one more target point up. Um, and I'm going to have to go right here. And then we've got that little gap over there. So I think there's some nice target points for this NEM. 
uh, anything below, well, anything below about that 56, yeah, 56.80. I don't think I'm going to like that stock too well. Not going to want to be in it. So that would be my uh, stop area from the beginning. Now down the road, I'll raise that stop up a little bit. Uh, Thomas. I, uh, this was on our watch list yesterday. It's still on the watch list today because I still think it's a nice looking chart. Uh, we did rise yesterday. Here we're pulling back a little bit today, giving us an inside day. This is a rounded bottom breakout and it's doing just what rounded bottom breakouts are supposed to do. They don't always do what they're supposed to do, but this one is doing it. Just up like this. Now there's no doubt in my mind that this is gonna pull back at some point and go back up at some point. And that's what we want to watch. That's the price action right in there. Remember to use your stops. A really great way to consider a stop is very simple. Um, I consider candlesticks as building blocks. Uh, we can build a block up. We can keep adding a block up until they get too tall, then they tumble. And when they tumble, they're just building blocks going to the downside until they shake and they come back up. So it's really simple. Um, here we have from this building block to this building block, you can see that block is up, right? Um, because we had a gap, I'm going to use the next building block as a stop. So we can come down and, and get the blocks tippy, but if it can hold over 11840, the blocks will stay moving up. So that would be a great spot for a uh, stop. You wouldn't like it if down here, because down here, the blocks are, didn't they fall over right there? If this is a block, even down here, here's two, three blocks side by side. Here's a block that's stacked. There's a block that's stacked. Here's a block that's stacked. This block is okay, it's just holding on to that block. But down here, this block has fell off the stack. So this is no good. No good at all. Kind of a different way to look at it, maybe. Um, AT&T looks pretty hot. Yesterday, uh, it got fired all up here. Nice volume yesterday. Came across the Trendicator and the T-Line. Looks like we're working with a little doji at the upper end. Looks to me like it's staring at the 50 period moving average right there. So go get it, little phone. Go get it, little AT&T. Jump right up. And who knows? Maybe it'll support, find buyers, and then we'll move up into the higher area, and then that would be a rounded bottom breakout. Uh, Val, V-A-L, I know a few people, myself included, Sorry, I need more water. Self-included, uh, we're long Val. So far, it's just running right along that trend line or running right along the T-line, right along the T-line there. So far, acting good. Anything below the T-line or this trend line, that would just change the whole dy dynamics of this thing moving up. So I couldn't stay in it. So anything below that trend line, uh, pretty much have to be out. COP. We we'll probably ought to talk about shorts. Monday, I'm doing a webinar over in the live trading alerts room. Everybody is invited, 1145 Eastern. And uh, I'm starting to get concerned, and I think we really need to brush up on shorts. So we're going to look at uh, some shorting scans and see how they're built, see how they produce. And who knows, we might even find a chart to short. So I, I do... I'm not ready to be full-blown short right now at this moment, uh, but I do think it's coming. Even if the market was to rally for the next week and go up, I still think we better start boning up on shorting. Get real good at it. Okay, so uh, we've got COP here, COP, ConocoPhillips, moving sideways with a slight little tilt to the downside. I'm going to have to say the sellers are winning. We're underneath the 50 period moving average. I'm going to call that a blue eyes failure. We start to see weakness here, especially we get through 69-ish. Uh, then the whole 200 period moving average is right down in there. And that's always going to be one of my 
targets. Uh, FSR looking like a short. FSR has rallied up. We've come back down. Here we've tested below the 50, came back up. Yay, bulls. Couldn't do it. So now we're starting to sag back down to the below that 50 period moving average. We're actually sitting on the 200 period moving average right here. We start to get through this area right there, then I see us maybe down into here. Now we could absolute, absolutely see a relief rally, but as long as we can keep those trendicator dots red, that's what I'm looking for. I'll look for a short if it does bounce up into this area, and then short if it breaks through. Uh, Home Depot, here's another one. Oh, Home Depot. Everybody loves Home Depot. When in doubt, go to Home Depot. It'll always do something good for you. Uh, it's one of those stable charts. Well, it looks like somebody's whacking the legs out from under it. Uh, we've now got, we have now gotten into uh, a bearish trap. Uh, I'm sorry, bearish trendicator scenario where price is below the, the trendicator. We've gone from a lot of green dots to some red dots. So how's Home Depot going to feel about that? Well, we'll keep our eyes on it. Looks to me like the next basic stop is around the 50 period moving average. Then maybe down here at price action support of 33.74. More than likely, you get some kind of bounce. And then further down, if you really want to think about that right now, uh, we're down here at 346 or 350. But right now, we can do this. I'm going to put a line right there. Anything below 404.80, I'm going to look at bullish. Now, on the flip side of this, if all of a sudden the bulls start popping up, I might have to look at this on the bearish side because it's right at its turning point. It's right at the turning point. So this, this could go either way. Watch the price action. Another one is, where is it here? IBM. There we go. IBM. That's still a bullish chart. The trend is still up. One of the most corniest things I say, and I do believe it's corny. It's corny every time I say it. Um, but it is so true. It is so absolute true. A, tr a, a chart will stay in a trend until it's no longer in a trend. It's that simple. And you nor I can tell when that trend is going to change. You, you can't do it. So just hang with the trend. It's the candlesticks, the price action, that gives us the clues of maybe the, the, the changing of directions. You can beat the trend by managing and, and monitoring the candlesticks. But when it's in that trend, you trade that trend. And right now, I think IBM looks absolutely beautiful. I think it's set up great and uh, just a great bullish chart. Um, Microsoft. Man, I need another drink. Thirsty, thirsty. Uh, Microsoft here, another short setup. So let me get, uh, actually, let's clear all this off. And let me get my little pen out here. Take a look at this. There we go. Pretty good. That's a toppy chart. That's a chart that's giving you warning. That's giving you warning, more warning, and that said, I told you so. There you go, and here we go down. So now we're below that 50 period moving average. That becomes the the I, I do a lot. I use a lot of moving averages. I also use price action, so I kind of marry them together. But for the baseline, for the for the uh, first go to, I'm always looking at moving averages and then evaluate from there. So here we've broken down through the 50 period moving average. Now the next thing I'm going to look for, and I know there's a there, there's a ton of moving averages in here. I don't mess with those. Uh, the next moving average that I'm going to look at is this one right there, and that's the dotted deuce. This is the 200. So in here, what I will do is look at price action along the way. So as I start moving down, I'll just put a line in. I just walk the line down. Oh, look right there. I see a possible target right through there. 
So there's one. We'll do another one. Yeah, we better put one right in this area. There we go. And from there, I think the dotted deuce takes over right here. So if Microsoft can keep this up, that's where I think we're headed here. Uh, MGM, only this one and one more, so hang tough. Don't, don't anyone run away. Uh, MGM, this is called a dreaded H pattern. Um, here's, this, this is the H right here. That's the H, dreaded H pattern. The dreaded H pattern uh, is, this is the making of a dreaded H pattern. A dreaded H pattern is when we, when we break down through this low, just like that. Um, it's the exact opposite of a J-hook continuation pattern. This is a, a dreaded H continuation pattern to the downside. Uh, nothing in here looks like we're ready to go. Nothing looks like we're ready to buy. Um, here's uh, This is type of chart gets people in a whole lot of trouble. And what happens is uh, we have a low, we have a high, all right, we have a higher low. Let's go for it. And I can see that. I, I get it. I, I get it. So the first sign of a bullish candle, we get all excited and maybe put some investment in there just to have it uh, turn around and, and and start coming back. We, we have to remember that it takes, it, it takes a plan to turn a chart around takes a plan. And when you look at this, this looks like a plan. Yes, it does. But what plan does this look like? A dreaded H pattern. It doesn't look like a plan to buy this low. Now, how could we buy the low? How could that low be a plan? Well, here's how it could be. A low, a high, a higher low. What we need to see now is the bulls take us up and when we get through that high, that's the tradable bottom right there. None of this is tradable because that's still part of that bearish H pattern. Now, I know a lot of traders are going to catch it early, but that's the proper way to do it right there. Last one I have, and thanks everybody for sticking with me. This is a long one. I didn't mean to make it this long. really didn't. Uh, had a lot on here, and I'm moving slow today. Very tired today. Another bearish H pattern setting up. Um, red arrow. Look at you. you look at look at that man. Talking about uh, telegraphing what's going to happen here. Down we go. Here's your back. Here's that rally up. The hopers. This is the hopers right here. And. How's that hope working out? We get below that low, we sink further. That's the trade ideas for today. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for putting up with me. I do appreciate it. Sorry this one was so long. Uh, I should could have shut some of those off, uh, but I just kept on going. Uh, we'll see everybody back here in just a few minutes, okay? You guys take care. Thank you so much. Happy Friday to everybody, and we'll see you in just a few.